All right, connecting from Ivan K. Walinyolo. Thank you so much for giving us that update. Now we get into yet another discussion looking at the music industry and 50 years down the road how hip hop has actually stayed the course of time. And uh, later on, we'll be talking about 20 years of my guest in the same industry of hip hop. But the backbone of it is that a party in the Bronx on the 11th of August, the year was 1973, is widely considered as the birthplace of hip hop. Pop. The art form has since touched every corner of this world and Uganda to be exact, evolving into one of the most significant genres. So the 50th anniversary of the hip hop is to be the most epic year party in all of music's history, celebrating uh, all over the world and uplifting and honoring every aspect of the hip hop culture. Of course, you do have from concerts that are happening to tours, to battles, uh, competitions, exhibitions, you're having your favorite. DJs, MCs, hype men and women, break dancers, beatboxers, uh, graffiti artists, and uh, many more uh, that do contribute to the hip hop genre coming up and showcasing the very best to this golden anniversary of the hip hop culture in the most extraordinary year so far. And of course, this comes at the backbone of uh, our own hip hop industry here in Uganda and uh, one of the legends of hip hop celebrating 20 years of his career in this industry what an exciting coincidence ladies and gentlemen I bring you Navio in flesh <laughs> good morning to you Navio good morning, good how morning. are you <laughs> I'm good I'm good uh, feeling feeling uh, feeling great okay yes. <laughs> all right uh, so let's first uh, get an understanding of uh, hip-hop as a culture because mm -hmm. so many genres have come along yeah. the way um, the way you understand hip-hop may not be the way I understand uh -huh. it may not be the way a 10 year or 15 year old or 20 year old yeah. understands it today yeah. so what is the hip-hop culture where does it stem from and what does it represent um, I think first of all uh, hip-hop culture is unto itself um, it's uh, it, it is actually a real culture. It has just been regarded as a real culture mm -hmm. uh, in the world, um, simply because, um, for example, you think of other genres like you know raga or reggae. They're very much based on uh, Jamaican uh, Jamaican roots. You know, uh, they're very specific to a country. But I think with hip hop, uh, it's such a wide there's such a wide variety of experience that you get with hip hop, and that's why it's a culture. Mm -hmm. You um, you have, of course, graffiti. Uh, you have beat, uh, beatboxing. You have um, break dancing. Um, you know, you have rapping. So, <laughs> you know, even that, I've, I've named three sectors before I even get to rapping. Mm. Um, so all of these sectors, the fashion as well, kind of make up what hip hop culture is. Mm. Um, so it's more of a way of life, I think, uh, more of a mindset. Uh, and um, I think that's why when you have a loyalist to hip hop, it's different from any other genre. They're not just going after your music. They're not just going after, um, you know, uh, your personality. They're they're actually attached. It's all attached to a culture. So you're addressing the public and you're addressing. Uh, the people who are within that culture every time you, you step on a microphone. Okay, all right. Uh, so as a culture, it's mm -hmm. celebrating 50 years, but how has it actually <coughs> had itself embedded in Ugandans? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it was, there was a huge wave of influence. Um, I'd say towards the mid-90s into the early 2000s, uh, hip-hop was hip hop and R and B were basically untouchable in uh, you know in the Ugandan in the Ugandan way of life. There was our local music, um, and not like this the, the sort of raga thing we're doing now, but I mean those, you know, the the old school Jimmy Katumbas mm -hmm. and those kind of artists, you know, and then there was hip hop. You know, we had the early guys D and D Slam and the Steve Jeans, SST and the perfect generation, that whole hip hop and R and B uh, vibe that was kind of sweeping through. Um, it was uh, it was it was relevant and it was huge, so you kind of had that um, surge um, that kind of uh, died down, came back when you had the emergence of lyrical G and Clear Cut, um, you know Sylvester Abrams mm -hmm. and Bataka Foundation, uh, so you kind of had that in the early 2000s as well. Unfortunately for that wave, we were all a bunch of kids. Everyone had to go back to school, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, for that wave. So uh, by the time that kind of died down. Um, and you know you had the rebirth of me and GNL mm -hmm. and and the myth and that whole new wave that came in 2008 um, that sort of gave the media the impression that hip-hop 
had kind of taken a back seat. Mm -hmm. um, when really, we're just trying to educate ourselves, <laughs> get done with school <laughs> right. uh, so we could come back b big and better. Okay, all right. So how did you meet hip hop? Ooh, I met hip hop uh, through peer pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, uh, my siblings uh, were pretty, pretty uh, big on hip hop, the culture. Um, I'd say my brother more for the music, uh, more for the roots and uh, the 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 hip hop vibe, you know, the, the what he'd be listening to, the West Side Connection, Naughty by Nature. Mm -hmm. It was really the more um, militant, um, revolutionary type of hip hop. And then my sister liked a lot of the commercial stuff and uh, the fashion as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that was her her bit into it. She was she was very top ten, you know, with with her with her music selection. So um, I think those those influences from my siblings, uh, and then of course. Um, you know, taking the old school music from my father and and uh, the top forty worldwide stuff from my mom, all of that kind of fused and and, and made made my music what it is now. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the general golden era of mm -hmm. hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, it had uh, sounding artists mm -hmm. back in the eighties, such as DMX. Um, there's that record uh, debut album that he had run yeah. that uh -huh. influenced society mm -hmm. uh, across the bar. However, it was characterized as a voice of depression uh -huh. and what the black community was going through mm -hmm. at the time time mm -hmm. and uh, since then we are in 2000 2023 mm, yes, and yes. Uh, of course the voice has changed over the course of time yes. so talk to us about the influence of hip-hop on the transition of society through mm -hmm. social economic transformations um, I think you had uh, a lot of desperation by the time hip-hop came out um, you know you had that five or six years in the States um, where things were relatively uh, normal in society, I'd say apart from racism, ETC. Mm -hmm. But by the time you hit the 80s, uh, into the 80s, this started to be a real uh, shift in what the voice was about. Before it was just about expression and freedom and togetherness. Uh, but now you had a new surge of desperation come into the hip-hop industry on that side, um, you know, which led up to the late 80s where you now have you know drugs being such a huge influence in the ghetto you know you had um, for them like you know six out of ten individuals getting involved you know at some point in, in, the, in, the, in, in the drug industry just to survive so you just happen to have a genre that was being pushed by black people uh, built originally to support um, you know talk about our our what our similarities empower kids so you had all of that running alongside a very desperate situation on their mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. um, so yeah you know of course the music definitely is going to turn more aggressive and uh, now you had the more revolutionary stance you know public enemy KRS one yeah. you know where that where they were talking about you know the government and you know the effects of slavery and how black people were being treated in the states um, and this now affected the entire world, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, like it or not, as Africa, we are a community. So whether or not it's African Americans or, you know, it, 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 af it affects us as well. Um, and it became another branch, you know, if hip hop is a tree, you know, you had the empowerment stuff that happened early, just the breakdance fun mm -hmm. stuff. You had the aggressive revolutionary KRS one stuff. Um, and then you had the commercial branch as well, which is now you're getting into the P Diddy's and the Biggies and the and the and the, the Tupacs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I dare say, um, who pluck from the, the revolution up other branches, but you know, you know, commercial gain basically when uh, people took notice and said, "Hey, this is a market." Um, that is when uh, those people are now able to capitalize, I guess, um, <coughs> and really take the culture, you know, to the mainstream. Okay, this is a culture also that has <coughs> able to actually bring out the very best in other people. Yep. Uh, it has uh, brought out the impact and influence of DJs. It has yes. brought us MCs uh -huh. because they're complementary to the art that you do. It has yes. brought out hype men, hype girls. Uh, there's dancers that also yeah. come <laughs> with the hip hop culture. Yes. So how have all these been able to be integrated to actually complement yes. um, hip hop as a whole culture? Yeah, and I mean, um, I guess that's the funniest thing about it. Yeah. You know, uh, we have this narrative now uh, that's gone through the media, you know, um, and thank you for pointing it out because we have this narrative that's gone through the media where people are like, hip hop is struggling in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And to us hip hop guys, we're looking at the whole industry dress like us, talk like us, party like us. Yeah. 
uh, you know, <laughs> drive like us, mm -hmm. you know, um, dance like us, you know. Uh, so we, we, we watch all of that happening and we're like, okay, as a, as a culture, we're stronger than ever, but people still have that, they still assume um, that hip hop is, is somewhere down the line. And you just have to take a look at, you know, I've said this before, you take a look at the top 20 artists right now. If you're having a big show, you know, it is very difficult to do it without the rappers. You know, without a Fefe, mm -hmm. without a Navio, mm -hmm. without a Gravity, you know, without a D Agent, without Rachel Ray, yeah. you know, um, without Baba, without Clear Cut, you know, w without all of these names, um, it's very difficult to put on a show. Um, at Fick for Maker, <laughs> you know, and that's already nine, mm -hmm. you know, that I've named just off head. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very difficult if you look at the top 20 performing artists right now, mm -hmm. competing artists to say that hip-hop doesn't have a place. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's okay. You know, people people uh, will get to realize slowly how we influence culture. Okay. Um, and, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Speaking of cultural influence, um, uh, you do have the new era, which is the technological era that has taken influence. Yes. Uh, where does this leave hip-hop in continuing its influence over the next 50 years? Yeah, I, th I think one of the most bankable things about hip-hop is because it was so personality-driven, we were able to sell, you know, CDs. Like, people wanted to own your music. Mm -hmm. So, whereas uh, other artists would have, you know, one or two songs that they shift around, uh, rappers, we were always able to sell a body of work. You know, you have uh, uh, crazy numbers, you know, crazy numbers for, like, my Strength in Numbers album, you know, which dropped during COVID, mm -hmm. you know, which is it's pretty unprecedented to sell, you know, 140,000 records. In Uganda, yeah. you know that was maybe the last um, proper sale of CDs that we were able to do because mm -hmm. everyone was at home. Um, we've now moved into a digital space, and so I think people still have an interest in the music, but they've it's now moved to a digital platform, which can be manipulated, which in Uganda, if not protected, means that people can access the music a lot freer. You know, um, before people would just bootleg your music, but. Mm -hmm. I think hip-hop had that thing where you want to own the project. You wanted to have it in your house yeah. and really, you know, be able to sit down with your CD, listen to the music in the car, on the dance floor. Um, and, and that's always been our advantage. But I think it's, it's only going to add to that because now they have easier access to us. You know, the tech, they have easier access to us. And now you're going to see more artists coming out of the, the, the woodwork. Mm -hmm. As long as we can sort out the royalties on radio, then, you know, the little deficit that we, that we, that we have from having to stream instead of selling CDs, you know, that, that'll be made up in a heartbeat. Okay, all right. Um, let's talk about the genre itself in terms of uh, the clean hip hop, uh -huh. um, <laughs> the advocacy hip hop, yes. the, the, the hip hop that brings people together yes. and supports things yeah. in society versus that hip hop that has vulgar utterances uh -huh. and negative social connotations embedded mm. in it. Uh, that's not yes. what we want our children to listen to uh -huh. in the next 50 years. Yeah. And so as one who is uh, making 20 years in this mm. industry, what's your mandate in ensuring that we do have good uh, culture embedded in the next 50 years of hip hop. Yeah, I think, um, uh, well, I guess to, to be honest, they, they, they have to worry about uh, Raga more than us. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, well, you're the, the one who's on the hot spot. Today. Yeah, the, the effect of uh, Raga on the yeah. youth right now yeah. um, and in the clubs is, is, is something uh, that hip hop could never, would never be able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we do talk about what is happening in society. Um, and that doesn't necessarily, that should not influence kids to go out and do what we see. Mm -hmm. But we're observers first and foremost. I think, um, I think the aggression is a part of music. Rock and roll will always have a side of it that is hardcore, m Metallica type, you know. I mean, okay, those guys almost go to the point of even devil worship and whatnot yeah. in their rock and roll stuff and, you know, heavy metal, they call it. Um, so th we've never been that intense. Mm -hmm. You know, on the Raga side, uh, though we do have the girls and everything, you know, um, the, the twerk culture is really something that is very reminiscent of Jamaican and Raga culture. Mm -hmm. So I think hip-hop does, we, we kind of report and, and talk about what we see more than tell people to go out and do it, mm. uh, which is the main difference, um, I think. And uh, hip hop is definitely still inspirational. There's still, for every 10 artists that are aggressive, there are 10 artists who are trying to inspire. Um, 
and for every album that drops also you're going to have 15 songs uh, 15 songs and you know five of them six of them will be inspirational songs okay. you know things that motivate people so hip-hop in general is more of an aspirational type of music you know uh, we will tell you to go and get rich and we'll probably tell you how to do it as well you know um, so uh, or how we did it you know it's, it's very autobiographical uh, mm -hmm. biographical like that mm -hmm. um, instead of just you know being like to a culture you know kidem, kidem, bidem, bidem, you know the raga you know I mean twerk thing it, it, we, we, it's, it's slightly different you know? okay yeah. all right let's bring it down to you 20 years I'm looking yes. at 1 million four hundred and seventy four thousand five hundred and sixty hours wow. of your music life let's talk about the first hour of your music life how wow. did it come about the first hour uh, being a listener probably mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the first hour was at Bava Studios with Hope Mukasa uh, listening to me after my mother had heard me rap and uh, yeah walking down from Ruaga to Lunguja mm -hmm. to the studio called uh, Bava Studios and having him hear me and Hope calling a, a young intern to come yeah. and also have a listen before he catches his flight and um, he heard me, he must have been like 15, 16 years old, about to travel to the States. And he put his bags down and he said, let's do some music. Really? And he was known as Steve Jean. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's my first hour mm -hmm. uh, in music, you know, uh, getting, already getting into were studio. Were you doing your own song or were you miming? I was doing my own song. Okay. Yeah. Which so song I was, doing, was that? Uh, it was called None of Your Bees. <laughs> uh, never came out. And oh. uh, yeah, the Are tape. you releasing it in September? Uh, that you, yeah, my first hour. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Why, that, why th this not? was 1994, my dear. So we need to have a recap <laughs> of 1994. <laughs> that will now be you're going to 30 years of, of it. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that was my first experience. Uh, short, sweet, and I, d I didn't pick it up again for mm -hmm. another another six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in your 20 years, how has it been like? Um, especially because you earlier mentioned that some of you, a uh, category yeah. of you, had to balance between actual education yes. and also your music love yeah, and yes. professionalism of yeah. it how were you able to integrate the two uh, it, it definitely wasn't without difficulty um, I think I always knew that actually the, the question is why did you want to integrate the two yeah yeah I think uh, hip-hop is something like anything else you know it's like a sport if you the less you do it uh, the less you're going to be good at something. Oh, okay. You know, like now I don't freestyle so much, mm -hmm. so I'm no longer, I can no longer say I'm a freestyle mm -hmm. type of guy who can mm -hmm. just talk about anything. Before I was very good at that. So, you know, hip hop, your talent is like a muscle. You know, um, picking up a paintbrush after 50 years, <laughs> even though you're very good at painting, you know, um, it, you, it's something you need to practice and be with at least weekly. Mm -hmm. um, so in the same way, um, the, the music for me is, 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 is something that I, I always needed to practice and, and, and keep close and get better at. The okay. um, yeah, second part of your question was... Uh, Why did you feel the need? Yeah, I think... You, you need to have the other education yeah. and then the music. Because I think, usually yeah. the thing is that when you get some stardom on you, you know, yeah. some concerts are up there, yeah. you can, people kind of drop the books. Yeah, I mean, and also the pressure, you know, the pressure was always there. I mean, we were the first group to get paid a million mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. You know, clear cut, we're 14 year olds. Uh, you know, getting paid a million. Mm -hmm. So I think our, our parents, you know, they came together and they're like, guys, you know, it's education first. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. You know, buy, buy what, do your motorbikes and your phones. Okay. Um, but, you know, you need to have one financial literacy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, know your budgeting. Um, <coughs> be able to save for the future. And education comes first. So when it's school time, yeah. you're going to go to school. Yeah. Um, so that happened for us. Um, ended up uh, going to school, going back to school. And I think it did a lot for us because... Now I was able to do communications and media studies and international relations at university. Mm -hmm. I was able to do side courses of business, psychology, understand my market better. So I feel like it inspired me to come out of school actually doing more and doing better, um, you know, and, and, uh, and it gave me, even though I had to go back, <coughs> I'll tell you, one of, one of those things was being in school, I released Ruckus mm -hmm. with Peter Miles. Yeah. It blew up all over Africa, it was yeah. number one for weeks in Africa and I was at school 
So I was at school watching this on MTV and Channel O, but I was in school. Mm -hmm. So I'd come back in the holidays, do one or two shows with Peter Myers. Peter Myers was swapping cars every yeah, day. Yeah. I think he must have bought three cars off that song. And I had to sit in school. I yeah. couldn't perform, you know, yeah. and performance is uh, unfortunately the only way that we get money. Um, so uh, that was one of those trying times. But I think it really made me appreciate the time I had on stage also. When you're in school, I made sure I, you know, it was a work hard, play hard thing for me. You know, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to focus, get my books in order. Yeah. And then when I come outside, I'm also going to work on the music harder, you know. Uh, so it's a, it was a work hard, play hard thing for me. Okay. Um, and it just inspired me to do, uh, to do better. In that regard, I know <coughs> that uh, people, when they discover they have a talent, um, then they, they quickly want to rush to a producer, to someone of influence, to manage them and do things like that. And they forget that other side of life. Can you speak to artists, especially upcoming artists, yeah. who think that one is greater than the other, their talent is the greatest of them all in this world? Yeah, I, I think uh, we always need to be careful. Uh, we always need to be uh, really rooted and understand that this isn't music, right? You don't get into music just with your talent. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand people who are more talented than me. But you get in here as a business. That's where you compete. So this is music business. So if you don't understand business, um, it's very tricky. And of course, there's some people who cannot educate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they literally, they, they cannot get the resources to educate themselves. But now, like you say, we're talking about technology earlier. A lot of these diplomas and a lot of these courses are online. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to educate yourself in a formal location, which you should, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not going to be able to do that, at least get the information online. Mm -hmm. Go and get those diplomas and chase some of those things online. You know, internet's getting cheaper. There, there are ways and means. It's going to be a struggle. But uh, of course, you're not going to have to go and put up and get the books and whatnot. Um, I would say that the school environment is the easiest to, to, to get that in. If you happen to be the one in 10, uh, the, you know, the two in 10 who does not have those resources available um, and does not want to apply yourself in that way, yeah. you know, that, then I don't think even the online is going to help. All right. You know, so you need to have a thirst at least to, be, to want to go to school. You know, to want to get better, that is how you then also, you know, will want to get better. Because if you're sitting at home, no one can motivate you mm -hmm. to even do an online course, mm -hmm. to go online and learn about your music yeah. business. So it's, you know, it's, it's up to the individual also. Okay. So drum roll, uh, Navio uh, at 20 yes. is around the corner in a few days. Yes. Uh, September will be here and you'll yeah. be going all big for your celebration. Yes. 20 years in hip hop. Talk to us about that. And yes. What are the celebrations from the 1st of September? <laughs> yes, going <laughs> forth. Yeah, so we're going to start setting up, maybe start setting up in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be at Sheraton, 2nd of September, so that's next Saturday. Yeah. Already not this Saturday, next Saturday. Um, it's closer than I thought, <laughs> uh, but it's exciting. Uh, of course, now we have songs reaching back, mm -hmm. you know, like I was mentioning from the All I Want to Know days to the Ruckus days to Wind It Up to Burn with the Blue Threes yeah. to Dimu Kondo to... Um, Bugumu to Ingalo to Badman from Kamocha, you know, um, there's basically like 60, 70 songs to mm -hmm. choose from, a mm -hmm. uh, 100 songs to choose from. And now we have to figure out a way to cut it down and still give the to people what they want. Navi at 20, 20 for 20. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be an amazing uh, Who are the artists event. that are dressing your stage? Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be a whole bunch of guys, actually. Uh, of course, we're going to have some of the new openers. Yeah. You know, we're looking at people like Lamu and, uh, and uh, Lagoon, you know, to usher us in. Um, and then, of course, during the show, I can't give out too much, but you know who I've collaborated with. <laughs> yeah, we know he's coming. <laughs> yes, you know the big dogs. Yeah. You know the, the yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and some amazing females as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we really want to highlight um, some of the females that have been in the industry that I've collaborated with. I think it's really important. Uh, so, yeah, look for one of, if not perhaps the best performance of my life okay. uh, when it comes to next weekend. We're going to be at Sheraton Gardens as well, so it's secure, safe, nicely guarded. Um, we're going to have, uh, you know, a 20K ticket all the way to, you know, the 5M VVIP mm -hmm. and the 3 million VVIP tables. It's going to be a whole experience, I okay. think. And we're going to have, of course, uh, you know, a, a special uh, 
exhibition, a Nabio 20 exhibition. Wow. So we're going to have old stuff there, my rhyme books and old clothing and you know, stuff that I wore nice. at significant times yeah. in my career. Um, and then the whole story as well for people to see because some people, they, they're like, oh, you go to the 60 awards, uh -huh. but they don't know the journey, okay. you know. So, yeah. All right. And uh, we close this out by playing you one of the songs that made me look at Navio in a different frame. I was like, oh, so he can do this kind of music also. And that is in Jogereza when he was wearing a Kanzu. <laughs> Who knew a tall man <laughs> in his skin <laughs> color would look good in a Kanzu? So <laughs> we sign it out with Jogereza as we alert you that on the 2nd of September, all roads are leading to Sheraton Grants.